So I want to welcome you to Waves of Faith. Today we're in week three of Habits of Holiness. We're going to be talking about praise and worship. We're going to be looking at those things. What is the difference between praise and worship? Oh, I, want, I want us to understand, I think sometimes in the church, we, we go to church and we think it's just a thing that we do on Sunday. We, we think that it's something that we do just when the song starts. But how do we worship God and how do we praise God when something goes wrong? Or when plans don't go the way that we want them to go. Um, you know, uh, this, this past, this past um, well, actually, last week, Mother's Day weekend, we were able to celebrate my dad's 60th birthday. And then we also were able to celebrate my six-year-old son's birthday. And then we threw him another party yesterday, right? Just because we were like, we weren't having with our friends here. But I remember six years ago when my wife was pregnant with my son. And the doctors t- told us, like, hey, there's something wrong with him. It's like, what, what, what do you mean? I was like, yeah, like his intestines are probably going to grow outside of his stomach. He has something going on in his brain. All these things that you can, like, what? Like, that's not what I signed up for. I didn't know that that's what you were going to tell me. And then after we started going to the specialist and day after day and week after week, I remember on my birthday, like, I was all crying. I was like, man, I don't care about the gifts. Just pray for this little boy here that we're going to be having. And then we had our families and friends. We prayed over him. And six years later, or or, you know, whatever, nine months later, he's born. Everything's good. Praise God. I mean, it's just amazing how God works in those moments, right? It's really easy to praise God when everything goes well. It's really easy to say, yeah, everything is good. Praise God for what he does. But, but I want us to understand is what is the difference between praise and what is the difference between worship? What is the difference why is it that we need to praise God? Why is it that we need to, to worship God? And how do we do that? I, I want to tell you a word, and the word is this. It's, it's halah. Okay, I'm going to go straight into this. The word is halah. What this means is, is that you boast and you brag on God. Okay, you boast and you brag on God. This is, this is what I was trying to get to earlier. It's kind of like whenever you're in your living room, right? And you're, you're celebrating because your team won, Right? How are you? Oh my gosh, yeah. Like, you know, and the crazy thing is that people are on Facebook, on Instagram, on Snapchat, and social media, and they're putting up their their videos. And and what is it? Everybody's liking it. They're like, yeah, that's 100. And everybody's loving it. And everybody's like, yeah, that's, man, that's a fan. That's how they should be celebrating. Right? Man, am I the only one in there to get like that? Or are we all together on this? Then, the crazy thing, though, is that then we walk out of these walls and we want to praise God and we want to boast about him. And what do we look? We look like a fanatic. We look like an extremist, right? Like, oh, man, that's too much for me. I don't know about that. I don't know about that dude, man. Like, he, he's worshiping God all the time. H- have you ever looked at the word? We, said it, we sang it a couple of times. Have you ever looked at the word hallelujah? Like, what does it mean? So when you look at the word, it's hale, right? Hale means to, to praise God. Yah or Jah, hallelujah, Jah means Yahweh. So who are we praising? Yahweh means God. So hallelujah or hallelujah, Jah means we're praising God. I I want you to understand that when you sing that, and another thing is that hallelujah is used four times in the New Testament, and it's in Revelations. And, And the amazing thing about it is that I don't know how many of you, when you sing hallelujah, do you know what you're saying? Or is it just something that you heard and it's like, oh, it's on the board, let me read it. Right? Hallelujah. You are praising Yahweh for who he is, how good he is, the goodness of what he is, what what he does in our lives. So it's crazy to me again that when we come in on a Sunday morning, sometimes I don't think our hearts are postured in a way that we should be praising and worshiping God. So, so we've talked about this the very first week. We talked about how we have been called to be holy. We are holy not because we are good. We are holy because God is good. And it is through Jesus that God has made us good. We have been made righteous because of Christ. So again, some of you might be like, oh, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm not ready. Hey, I'm not either, but I know who is. And that's why I've given my life to him. That's why we see baptisms where people have surrendered and given their life to Christ. And so I want you to remember that you have been called to be holy. You have been called to be set apart. That's what the word holy means, to be set apart, to be different, to look different from the world because the God that we serve does not look like the world. He is different from the world. So we are set apart. 
Then we, we talked about how we are a, a holy, uh, we are a temple, a house of prayer. So when we pray, we don't pray for our will, we pray for his will. And it's because he's holy, he knows more, he knows all things, and we go to be in his presence so that our heart lines up with him. So I want you to understand is that when we show up here on a Sunday morning, how many of us, we feel like we can only worship when music is being played? Man, all right, we're going to have to be honest today. How many of y'all worship only whenever you're driving? Y'all need to start listening to some worship music. I'm at, after church, uh, where's one of the elders? Make sure you make a list of all the Christian stations so we can have some people worship in here. But, but here's the thing is, how many of us, when we hear the song started in here, we're like, oh, it's time for worship. We need to go in there. I want to remind you, and I want to tell you this, is that worship is not a song. Worship is not a song. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship is not a song that you listen to that makes you lift up your hands. Worship is not a song that when the guitar is doing the solo or the kick is hitting hard and it hits your chest, that doesn't mean that worship has started. Worship has started the day, the, the moment that you wake up with the new breath of life. Amen. Worship has started when, when you open up your eyes and you're like, man, not, not, not just, man, I got another day of life, but God is good because he is good. He is worthy of my praise. Because God is good, I'm going to live a life that glorifies him. Because God is good, I'm going to use everything that I have within me to use it to bring him glory. Jesus would say this. So, so Jesus would tell us, hey, this is the greatest commandment. This is what it looks like to, to not just live a, a life that's a song in the background, right? It's not a walk-up music. You know, think about the major league players. They have their, 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 their walk-up music and they get ready to bat or whatever. They're getting pumped up, right? This isn't what worship is through a song. Jesus would say this, and he says it in Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. He says this, and you shall love, listen to this, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Well, what does that mean, Pastor Mario? That means that I need to love God with everything, with all that I have, not just some of the things that I have, but with everything that I have, everything that is within me. I believe that when you love God in everything, you put him in everything. When you love God above all things, you put him in all things. You put them in your marriage, you put them in your giving, you put them in your time, you put them in your treasures, you put them in where you serve. Because God is everything. To love God is the start of worship. So he says, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And then he goes, hey, you want to continue to have this lifestyle? You want to continue to live this life of worship? He says, love your neighbor. Somebody say, love your neighbor. Love I don't know how weird it's going to be, but look to your neighbor and say, hey, I love you, neighbor. They're like, oh, I don't know these people, right? Hey, but get, look to your other neighbor that you didn't want to tell first and say, hey, I love you too. <laughs> all right. So here's the thing is we have been called to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind above everything. Because when we love him above everything, we put him in everything. But yet at the same time, when we love our neighbor, listen to what it says, as much as you love yourself. So when you love God, you know who you are. You love, you're like, man, I'm here to serve God. I'm here to love God. And God will use those things. So again, worship is not a song. It's a lifestyle. It says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says this. It says, to appeal to you, therefore, brothers. This is Paul speaking. And he says, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your what? Your spiritual worship. That's what it is, that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Jesus has done that for us. He has presented his body before God, and that's why we have been made righteous before God. But yet we live a life that loves him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. We present our bodies saying, God, I am here. Thank you for a new day. Thank you for your new mercies. I am here to worship you. I'm here to glorify you. Use me today, God. Use my things. Use the things that you have blessed me with to glorify your name. But listen to the word, it says a sacrificial, I mean, uh, as a living sacrifice, I'm sorry. To live your life as a living sacrifice. What does that mean? That means to put your life out there. That means to put yourself after other people. That means to put your wife and your kids, right? But the way we do that is by putting God 
above everything. See, you're not going to be able to love your neighbor if you don't love God. You're not going to be able to love God if you don't put him in all things in your life. And I believe that God wants us to not try to get all hyped up on songs and on beats, but he wants us to get excited because of the heartbeat that he gives us every single day that we get to breathe and we get to say, God, I want to glorify you today. Let my song bring you glory. Let my daily life bring you glory. Here's another one. And I'm about to get to, to the actual part that I'm trying to get to. Anything or anyone worshiped other than Jesus is a what? How many of y'all got idols in here? Man, we gotta be real, come on. I'm gonna raise my hand, okay? We'll be up front here today. How many of us got idols? All y'all better raise up y'all's hands, unless, <laughs> unless you're perfect. We all have idols. Maybe you're like, well, what do you mean? Maybe our idols are our kids. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's the marriage that you're in. You're like, oh, no, nope. nobody's going to interfere this. Not even God. Everybody has an idol. There's something that we put before God, and we're struggling to say, man, God, I, I don't want to put this before you. But this is where we have to be seeking God daily. This is where we have to be running after him. And we need to be asking him, can you move in my life? I know you'll move in my life so that I can glorify you. It says here in Matthew 4, 10, it says this. Then Jesus said to him, he's talking to Satan, he says, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. If you're not serving God, what does that mean? If you're not living for God, you have an idol issue. If your life is not surrendered and submitted to God, you have an idol issue. If, if you're not really saying, you know what, God, everything that I have, everything that you've given me, it's all because of you. I want to use it to glorify you. You have an idol issue. That is just the truth. Because we have been called to serve him with our lives. It says in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 11, this is why Jesus is worthy of praise. It says, therefore, God has highly exalted him. And bestowed on him the name that is what? Above all names. Jesus is the name above all names. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I, I want to tell you this is that many of us will say, well, yeah, I, you know, I, I believe in Jesus. And there's people that friends that we have that probably have never professed their faith in Christ. I believe because of what the scriptures say that they're going to be bowing down to Jesus. They're going to say, whoa, this is the king of kings. This is the Lord of lords. This is this is what my friends and my people were talking about. And they're going to be bowing down before Jesus because his name is above all names. So do you have an idol issue? Is, is when, when it comes to praise, are, are, are you, are you, is it simple for you to just praise God because it's just easy? See, praise is very easy for us to do. Why? Because it doesn't ask nothing of us. Think about it. Think about it. Praise doesn't ask anything of us. I can praise my wife right now as she's watching from home and I say, hey, man, you cooked dinner great last night. Praise is universal. Think about it. You praise your coworkers. You praise the mailman. You, you praise because he brought your mail on time. You praise Amazon because, you know, all y'all get excited, right? Oh, hey, he's going to be here in two days. You're praising Amazon. You're writing on Twitter like, man, great job. Y'all do great when it comes to Christmas time. See, we, we praise because it, not, it, doesn't, it doesn't take anything from us. But when it comes to worship, this is where it becomes hard. This is why some of us, we have a hard time pray, uh, lifting up our hands to God. We have a hard time lifting up our hands to God because it asks something of us. You, you, I, I believe that some of us, we don't lift up our hands because we're thinking somebody's watching us from behind us. And like, oh, man, they probably saw me at the club. Oh, I heard some laughter. No judgment, no judgment. Right? Oh, oh man. I don't know if I want to lift up my hands because what if the person that I cut off on the freeway is behind me? Or, or you know what? I don't want to praise. I don't want to lift up my hands because 
the people that are sitting beside me is my family and they actually know who I am. They, they know how I talk, they know how I live, they know that I just show up every single Sunday because that's just, that's just what we do. Or maybe some of you honestly is just like, man, I just show up because I know we're gonna go eat after church. I, I mean, that's just the truth. And so when, when it comes to praising God, we're like, hallelujah, right? Yes, praise Jesus, man, he's good. He is faithful. But when it comes to worship, when it comes to worship, it's hard because it's intertwined with surrender. I want you to think about that. Praise is intertwined with thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. But worship is intertwined with surrender. See, when, when people worship back in the Old Testament, some of them, and still today, we, we do this today, people will lay flat on their face. Think, think about the vulnerable position that you're in. Some people will come forward and, and they would kneel down at the front and they would, they would just bow down and put their head down and they're not worried about anything that is around them. Right? Even this, and, and Pastor Aaron Pastor Aaron gave me this illustration. I thought it was a great illustration. He said this. He said, I said, I said, hey, we lift up our hands. And I was like, why? And he's like, I want you to think about it. Whenever you have a little kid and they're running to their mom or their dad, how are they running to them? How? Right? Whenever they need something, they're like, right? I don't know if I look like a little kid, but they're running, right? It's the same way with us is that when we are, this is where we get to come together. And there's no shame. There's no judgment where we say, God, I need you because you are good. I need you because you are holy. I need you because you are the name above every other name. I need you because I don't want no other God but you. And so when we put up our hands and we're worshiping him, it's us seeking him and we're saying, I need you. You, I surrender everything. I give it all to you. So I'm going to take you to this story in Matthew chapter 26, verses 6 through 10. And listen to this. It says, now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment. How many of us got some expensive stuff in our house? Man, come on. Okay, how many of y'all got some semi-expensive stuff in y'all's house? All right, there we go. And she poured it out on his head as he reclined at the table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, listen to what he says. Why do you trouble the woman? For she has, some, she has done a beautiful thing to me. Man, it amazes me here when this woman, and I want you to think about this. Who is this woman? Who is this woman? This woman, if you go and you read in the other gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? If you look at the other gospels, the, the, this woman is the woman that saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. This is, who Je this is who this woman is. Comes before Jesus, and she, what they would do, these women, they would, and the women of this time, they would wear this little necklace with a little jar, a little flask, and, and they were able to wear it, and it was a perfume that they would wear. And it was very expensive, as it says. And she takes off the top and pours it on the head of Jesus. And yet you have the disciples are like, what, what's going on here? Why would she be so wasteful? Why would she be so wasteful with the things that she has? Like, we, if she really wanted to do that, we could have saved it. We could have sold it. We could have been able to feed so many poor people. And if you keep reading, Jesus is like, hey, the poor you all have, you'll always have but me. Like, he's like, I'll, I'll be gone here in a bit. I want you to see this, is that this woman knew who Jesus was. This woman knew what Jesus can do. This woman knew what Jesus is capable of. This woman has seen somebody walk out of the grave, and as Jesus says, Lazarus, come out of the tomb, you see Lazarus walking out. This woman has seen Jesus rise dead people from the grave. 
And yet, these disciples did not understand the worship that she was bestowing, the worship that she was presenting before them. See, when I think of this, and I look at what this woman has done, this woman has given away their, their expensive ointment, right? She's like, man, you know what? This is what I have. This is all I have to offer. See, for many of us, the most expensive thing that we are carrying is our life, is our pride that we're like, I don't know if I want to give this away. I really don't know if I want to worship God with my life. The disciples, some of us, we have those disciple friends, right? That we're worshiping God, we're reading our word, we're in there, we're praying, and they're like, what are you doing wasting your life on this? What are you doing wasting your life on this God that you don't even know that exists? But let me tell you, let me tell you, church, I, I've seen marriages that were dead come back to life. I, I, I've seen people that said, I got nothing, and yet they find everything in Jesus. I, I've seen my marriage go from broke as a joke, but yet in Jesus it became everything. I, I've heard stories of people's arms being broken, and yet it gets healed before their eyes. I, I've, I've seen miracles. I've seen miracles in people where they're like, man, I no longer want to follow my ways, but I want to follow the ways of God. See, this is what this woman had happened. What had happened to this woman is that she had encountered a Jesus that wasn't about just trying to make people follow him, but he came to show us who he was really about, what he was really about. And maybe you're like this woman today saying, man, there's something that I'm holding on to that's too expensive, but yet when we pour it out to Jesus and we say, Jesus, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy to be worshiped. He's like, man, don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry if you think that your life isn't perfect because what you are doing is a beautiful thing. What you are doing is a beautiful thing. And I believe that a habit of holiness that we need to have in our lives is a, is a lifestyle that is daily worshiping God. Continually worshiping. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with. But let me tell you, just because people were getting baptized today doesn't mean that these were perfect people. They, they weren't. I, I know them. They weren't. They're not. But they understood what it was to give their life to the perfect one which is Jesus, because he is worthy of praise. He is worthy to be worshiped. So I don't know what it is that, that you're holding on to. I really don't. I, I don't know what it is that you're holding on to and you're saying, people are watching me. That we need to learn how to turn our lifestyle, not, not into a song, but into a daily walk with God, worshiping Him. So I'm going to do at this moment. I'm going to I'm going to ask now. I'm going to make it a little bit awkward for you. Is that we rise up? The reason why I say awkward is because maybe for some of you, it's like, man, I've never done something like this. There, there's a there's a posture of opening up your hands so that you can receive from God. Before you jump ahead let's reach out to him so lift up your hands this is a, a sign of surrender this is a, 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 a this is a posture of you saying God I need you whatever it is at this moment that you just feel that you need from him if it's strength ask him for strength if, if you feel weak and you're vulnerable say God I need you I need your help I need your guidance God God, I'm not worried about who is watching, what they think of me, because I know what you think of me. I know who I am in your eyes. I know what you have done for me. I know that I no longer want to be dead, but I want to be made alive in you, Father. No longer do I want to see my, my marriage failing because I wanted to surrender it all to you. So God, I put myself in this point of surrender. God, we come to you there this time, Father. We ask, Father, that you move in a mighty way, Father. 
that we no longer just sing hallelujah because it's a it's a word that we sing on us on, on a on a wall father but that we sing hallelujah because it is a praise to you father father i ask that you continue to move in a mighty way father i pray for the people that are in this room father i pray for those that are online father i i, I ask father that we continue to have a heart of worship through our lives, through our finances, Father, through our families, through our marriages, Father, that you use us, Father, to know that we have been set apart, that we have been called to be holy, Father, that we have been called to be used by you in a mighty way, oh God. God, I ask that you be with those that are hurting today, that are having a hard time struggling everything to you, Father, and that, that is what their heart condition is today, their attitude is, is mad towards you, Father, but yet that they find the peace that they need, Father. I ask, Father, that those that are full of pride in here today, that their pride be struck down, Father, that they get knocked off of that high horse, Father, that you become the center of attention, Father, that you are the one who gets the glory above everything else, Father. Father, we ask that you move in a way, Father, that only you can do. Father, we, we no longer want to be wasteful on wasting our worship on things that do not bring us life. Father, we no longer want to be wasteful with what you call precious, which is our words and our praise and our worship to you, Father. That we do not waste it on the things that do not give us life, but yet that we that we spend it and we, we just pour it all out on you, God, because you are worthy, because you bring glory, Father, because you have life, you have peace, you have grace, you have mercy. God, in the middle of a season that we did not want to find ourselves in, Father, that we have the words, Father, to bring you praise, to bring you honor, Father, that we have the heart, Father, to, to bow down to you, to bow down to your will, Father God. Father, I ask that you move in a mighty way, in a way that we are obedient to you above all else, Father, because you are worthy. You are the King of kings. You are the name above all names, Father. And it is because of you it is because of you that we get to wake up every single day to glorify you, Father. Use us in our jobs. Use us with our families, Father. May you have glory. May you have honor with all the things that we do, Father God. Father, break us in those areas that we need to be broken, Father, so that we can be ready to worship you. Father, we no longer want to show up late on Sunday mornings, Father, because we are here to worship you, Father. We no longer want to show up late when it's time to worship you, God, because we want to be a living sacrifice that brings you honor, that brings you glory, Father, in all things that we do, Father God. We praise you, God. We praise you that we get to experience five people get baptized today. And it is because of you and the work that you're doing in their lives, Father. Father, I pray for those, Father, that feel like they have no value. That feel like they're not even worthy to worship you, Father. And that I know that some people's arms are tired as I speak, Father, but that we don't grow tired. We do not grow tired of worshiping you. That our hearts do not grow tired of worshiping you, Father. That our, 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 our attitudes in our hearts always ready to lift your name on high. Father, we thank you. We love you, Father. We love you. We love you. We love you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask all these things.